I know. You want to eat? You want to eat, princess? Oh, good girl, kissing Timmy. Good girl, kiss, kiss Timmy. Kiss Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Good girl, kiss me. Hi, and welcome to our channel. Today, we were supposed to show you the front the porch front of the caravan because Luke is almost finished but we had a slight problem with it and the problem was that we ran out of varnish and he is not going to the shop for a couple of days so we decided we will show you something else instead another side project that Luke has been working on it is right behind me Boop. <laughs> I'm not going to show it to you yet though so we will upload that video on Thursday instead hopefully it will be ready by then and if not it will happen Sunday we will see, but on our piece of land, we are we are constantly learning new things every day, every hour, well, maybe every minute too. We're constantly learning anyway. And this week we learned a very important, important lesson. We don't come from a very cold country, so these things to deal with freezing temperatures is very, very new to us. And to remember to do certain things is very new to us too. And unfortunately we are learning from our mistakes. Well, we have to pay for them too. When we learn from mistakes and they don't cost us anything except time, it's okay. But when they start costing us money too. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, this, uh, this week the water pump went and so did our geyser. I guess we'd, when we took out the water, we didn't take it all out and it cracked when it froze. And so did our water pump that sits on our well. When the IBC tank was empty, I put on the pump and the water sprayed out of the back of it but not from the pipe side from the actual machine there was a huge crack going right from the top to the bottom so i guess water remained over there in this part and when it froze it expanded like ice always does and it broke it so that was a hard to learn lesson but hopefully we will not make this mistake ever again we were very lucky luke took it to be fixed yesterday and the guy actually has a he said, oh, I think I have a back piece for it. So we don't even have to buy the whole thing again and it can be fixed. So hopefully he won't charge us too much for it. We will see. Either way, we're going to get a pump, the pump back tomorrow. So that is good. <laughs> so that was the lesson we learned this week. And now we are also experimenting with KNF. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is it's Korean natural farming. From what I learned so far about KNF, which is not much I must say, but there's so much to learn and we taking it baby steps like we do everything else. But what I learned so far is that you use stuff in your, the environment around you to create a place where microorganisms thrive and multiply too. Maximize the diversity in your soil, especially fungi diversity. So this all helps create a great foundation in building healthy soil without the use of pesticides and herbicides without tilling and yeah we really want to get into this but everything has to be done slowly because everything is new and confusing at first but I think it will get so much easier this is as simply as I can explain it to you without going into uh, more detail and me getting confused about it too but if you really are interested in this I would suggest clicking on the link that I put in the description below and I'm actually putting it up here too Chris Trump he gives a very good introduction to IMOs, indigenous microorganisms, and how to make that. And um, he is very good at explaining, albeit it's a little bit windy on the day that he explains stuff, but bear with him because he has very good points. So KNF has a lot of these acronyms. So there's LAB, lab, which is what I'm going to show you that I did this time. It stands for lactic acid bacteria, but there's a lot of these acronyms on his site and a lot in KNF, Korean Natural Farming, there's IMO, LAB, OHN, WCA. So if you want to LWM, learn with me, then just keep up with what I'm doing because we're going to be getting into this a bit more the more we learn. We're going to share what we know and if you want to learn with us, come along. So this whole process took 11 days in total and 
I've heard that it will take much less if it's hotter weather. So because we did it in summer and the weather's cold and no matter where we put it, it's cold. So it takes longer to activate. I'm not sure if that's the right word. You need rice, you need water, you need a jug, you need milk, a strainer, and uh, we used cheesecloth. That's really it. You give your rice a wash just till the rice, rice is covered, so it's really nice and thick white liquid, and you use that liquid. So that's what we are going to use to start up the whole thing. You put it in a jar and cover it with a paper towel, or we use cheesecloth. It doesn't really have a smell. So, and then you put it somewhere dark and cool, and you check it from day to day. So we checked on the second day, this is Luke's reaction. Oh, smells of farts. Ooh. Farts. <laughs> Definitely farts. <laughs> Put it back in a dark place. We checked it on the third day. Hmm. Kind of smells like popcorn. Weird. You have to wait till it smells sweet, apparently. And we checked on the fourth day. As you can see here, it separates. Been seeing that? Okay, let's go and see. Molly, you want right. to smell it? Put your nose in that. <laughs> Molly, you want to smell it? Come here. Come up. My goodness, what big ears you have. You want to smell it? Smell it. What is it? Is it sweet? Is it sweet? Is it sweet or sour? Is it sweet like you? <laughs> Sweetheart! It's, it's cold. <laughs> Lactobacteria. Now the fourth day it was almost ready but we had no idea what we we're doing. I, like I told you we're total beginners at everything that we do. To get the smell out we're shaking it around, hmm, smelling it. That's not the way to do it. You try and you try not to move it as much as possible. So we stayed mixing it about to smell it. So then once we thought hmm, it smells ready we couldn't use it anyway because it had all got mixed up and you, you kind of need the sediment to be away from the rest of it. So we let it rest for another day. And when the sediment had gone to the bottom again, we used it. That was the first step. So all it entailed is taking a bit of rice water, giving it a bit of a sniff here and there, and then it's ready when it starts getting a little bit of a sweet smell. You know it's ready. If you smell it and it's gone from sweet to sour, then you've left it there too long. So it's good that you check it from day to day. So that is a step one. Step two is you're ready to, to mix it with milk, but you don't want any of the sediment that's on the bottom. And I've watched another video where it said there's a film at the top, but ours didn't get it. So I don't know what's going on with that. But what this guy did that I liked was that he just, so he doesn't get it up, he had a turkey baster. Now we don't have that. And he got the liquid out slowly and separated it. So he didn't touch the bottom at all. And that's what I did, but I didn't have a turkey baster, so I used a syringe, which was um, not as good. It took much longer, but I did it. So I took it out slowly with the syringe, this rice wash water, I guess that's what you can call it. And I put it into a separate container and into a clean jar. So I took a quarter of a cup of this rice wash water and I mixed it with two and a half cups of milk. And I used full fat milk. And that is step two. All you have to do is do that, cover it again with cheesecloth or a paper towel. This, this helps from getting rubbish inside, I guess. And I don't know why you have to cover it, but it does make sense that it's covered. But as long as it's got, it can breathe too. And you put it in a dark, cool place again for between three and five days. Ours took six days. And this is when the exciting bit happens and it starts splitting. We didn't see anything happen on the first, second or third day. Absolutely nothing. And I thought maybe it's not going to work. But on the fourth day, I saw a tiny split. Fifth day, it split good. And the sixth day, it was, it was beautiful. The curds looked delicious. And it smelled really nice too. Like, it's cheesy. It smells cheesy. The middle bit is the lactobacillus serum and the bottom bit is i'm not sure let's just say sediment so you just want the middle bit 
the lactobacillus serum and that is going to be good for the plants and I heard also it's very good if you spray it in the chicken coop if you have a smelly coop it's also good for your body I haven't found out how um, or why and how to use it but it does a lot of stuff if you put it in your compost pile it will your compost will break down faster it is brilliant I I tried to take the whey out as slowly as possible just so it doesn't get mixed up with the rest I didn't want to since I only want the middle bit I wanted to try and get out as slowly as possible so I took out the whey put it aside I, I poured this lactobacillus into a jar and I put it in the fridge it really looked very white when I did it the first time so I thought okay I probably did something wrong but it was still pretty white and I saw the color of this guy Chris Trump and it was yellowy kind of yellow a uh, yellowy color so i didn't think it looked the same but i still did what he said put it in the fridge and left it there and then i went to check on it the next day and it the sediment went down to the bottom again so obviously there was something wrong with my sediment maybe because we were moving it around too much i'm not sure exactly what happened but the next day i separated the two the sediment and the and the lactobacillus and now we have the right color so i i'm pretty sure we did that step right once you make the lab or the imo you put brown sugar with it sugar makes everything go dormant till you're ready to use it again once you add the liquid to it then it it wakes up again so once this is ready i'm going to put it in the fridge so i don't have to add brown sugar to it i'm going to keep it refrigerated because we have very little we're going to use it straight away and i won't need to add brown sugar to it just to make it dormant so then I have to revive it again but you don't just use it as it is I haven't found out exactly what to what but I think the basic rule is one to a hundred you mix it one part to a hundred parts water if I'm, if I'm going to use 10 liters of water I'm going to use a hundred milliliters of this good stuff so then we had the whey and the whey is it's good for the chickens, yes, but you can also make cheese with it. And I wanted to try that out. So I watched another video on how to make cheese. There wasn't very much because we didn't make such a big batch. But I think I did pretty well. I didn't film it because I didn't. I thought I was going to fail, actually. When, when it comes to cooking, most of my things are fails. So I didn't, want, I didn't even think it was worth doing it. But I can show you the result. It's very nice. I, I had to press it. Um, I had to press it and I didn't have anything to keep the shape of a cheese or anything but it just looks like a slice of white chocolate <laughs> or a used soap bar one or the other it definitely did not look anything like cheese but it tasted really good and we were really lucky because we had run out of cheese of grated cheese that night I didn't know that we ran out of grated cheese and we used that in our pasta so yay I made something that actually tasted good <laughs> Okay, so that was our little experiment with lab. It's just an amazing thing that you can do in your own home that won't cost you any more extra money and is very good for your plants. For you, where you have to look at those health benefits and for your garden. If you did like this and you are going to try it, send us a comment and tell us you're going to try it. And give us a thumbs up if you like this video. We are getting some awesome comments, guys. Keep them coming because they're really giving us a boost and our channel too now to show you what luke has been up to he is really into his woodwork and he's really getting good so if you want to see what he's done this time stick around over to luke over to you luke hi guys a bit windy today oh mind the chainsaw poppy okay you can okay okay poppy so last week I got my chainsaw fixed, Woo! which is good because I, I had only used it a few times um, before it stopped working when I bought it about a year and a bit ago. This in fact looks a bit loose. I might tighten it a bit. Um, but yeah, I've got all this, all this wood like you might remember. Um, the ones that don't have knots or branches, I'll be able to turn into shingles which I've done in the previous videos. Um, and some I've chopped for, for wood, for burning. And I thought once I have this working and I haven't got much to do today, I'm gonna try and make one, a one piece stool. I've never done any chainsaw carving. Um, 
so it's always a good time to learn. I think I'm gonna, that's my highest one, just back there. So I think I'm gonna try and turn that into a stool. I've got a little axe I just bought from Agriloja in town, and I think I'll use this chainsaw and that axe and see what comes out of it. No matter what, even if it doesn't come good, I can use it for firewood, so it's a great opportunity to learn a bit. So we'll see how it goes. Here goes nothing as usual. Hi guys, so this is where I left it yesterday. Today I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. I did borrow uh, my friend's draw knife and I started doing it a bit here, as you can see, just to smooth it out a bit. I don't need perfect symmetry or anything. It is what it is, it's rustic, um, but I'm really happy with it, eh? So today I'm just gonna clean it up a bit maybe just around here a bit, and maybe with the chainsaw make this little backrest, backrest, it's like three inches long, but um, maybe slightly thinner, if I manage to cut it with the chainsaw, or maybe with a scalpel, we'll see how we go. So yeah, get onto it. Kind of reminds me of turning potatoes, <laughs> like the fondant potatoes, you know, the eight-sided barrel-shaped potatoes or carrots or whatever. There you go, my very first one piece outdoor furniture stooly thing. <laughs> I'm sure there's many, many more to come. Um, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. I'd probably have to varnish it again once it's dried in a year or two. From what I've read online, when the wood shrinks and then you get patches. But I have a can, it's just a few licks. And I thought I might as well. Alrighty, we'll wait for that to dry. Tomorrow I'll give it another coat and then we can start using it. I might even use it indoors actually as a fifth chair inside the caravan for now, we'll see. But I'm very, very happy with how it came out. Wasn't that amazing? Did you like what he made? This is with no experience and um, he's getting so much better. If you did like what he made, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to follow our journey, watch us grow, help us grow, then subscribe. And if you want to see how our gypsy caravan turned out, make sure you watch next Thursday's episode. Or Sunday. We'll see if it's ready by Thursday anyway. We'll have something for you Thursday no matter what. So, as usual, thanks for watching and have a great day, guys.
what if it comes out crap? No matter what, even if it come, doesn't come very good, I can always burn it and use it as firewood. So it's a great opportunity to learn.